Now just a handful of houses, at the turn of the 20th century Donny Bristle was a busy mining village in Fife, Scotland, situated a little to the southwest of Cowdenbeath. The coal mines were by far the largest employers in the area. Donny Bristle Colliery employed approximately 350 people and had seams which ran under a landscape of boggy ground and moss, an area known as Moss Morin. In 1901, a disaster occurred at the colliery which captivated the whole of the UK. The account you're about to hear relies heavily on eyewitness accounts of the rescue efforts over the following days by an unknown author published in a 1902 book so rare that the British Library has no record of its existence. It was most likely produced to raise funds for the families of the victims. In the introduction to the disaster, the author says, Never has a more harrowing accident in its alteration of hopes and fears and its altogether too certain tragedy ever happened in the annals of mining in Scotland. August 26, 1901 started routinely enough. Alexander Smith and David Campbell were engaged in testing the ground above a spot in the mine air seam, with the intention of creating an air shaft. The two men probed upwards with a long iron rod and were satisfied, as no water entered into the mine through the small hole they had made, that it was safe to proceed with the air shaft. Around 2pm, Smith and Campbell were suddenly overwhelmed by a sudden inrush of moss via the shaft they were in the midst of constructing. Smith and Campbell, along with two other miners, were killed, while six others found themselves trapped by the inflow. Inspection of the scene revealed a precarious situation. A large crater had opened and moss was still rushing in. An aerial railway was constructed to allow persons to be carried over the crater without risk of falling in and then to report back what they saw. At the same time, huge quantities of wood began arriving to shore up the sides of the crater and stem the inflow of moss. A rescue shaft was also sunk and the two rescue parties assembled. One of them, led by Thomas Rattray, disappeared into the mine and were never seen alive again. The day after the collapse, five of the six trap miners were freed, leaving only Alexander Bald to be brought to the surface. A large crowd had gathered, and each rescued miner was greeted with a resounding cheer, while local doctors plied them with tea, bovril and other stimulants. The author of the book about the disaster noted, One could not help noting the calmness and the devotedness to duty displayed by those involved in the operations. As the men came to the surface, there was a flickering gleam of enthusiasm, and then they returned at once to the work of rescue. A setback was encountered when, in the course of trying to free Bold, two of the rescue party, John Jones and John Shedden, became trapped themselves. It would take another two days for the three men to be saved, Robert Law managing to free all of them at around 2am on the morning of the 29th. Law was well used to danger. He had assisted in the rescue efforts at nearby Hill of Beath earlier that year, when seven miners were killed by gas. Law would go on to serve in the First World War, but was badly affected by gas himself while trying to rescue James Newton from Number 7 Pit, Cowden Beath, in 1917. Law lived until the age of 68, passing away in 1931, a highly respected figure in the community. Today, two craters are still visible at the site of the disaster, although the surrounding landscape is much changed. The bodies of the four missing rescuers were eventually located four months later. They were described as being found in the easy pose of sleep. It became clear they had tried every possible escape route, but eventually resigned themselves to their fate. Their final hours were spent writing notes for loved ones, which were found upon them. By chance, the body of David Campbell, killed instantly while probing the moss, was found nearby, 
he had been carried more than 500 yards by the inrush. One of the most harrowing accounts of the disaster came from John Colville, who survived but was unable to save his friend, George Hutchison, who was engulfed by the moss. Colville described the scene. He shouted to me, Geese your hand and try to draw us out. I tried my best. I was standing a little higher than where he was, and I got hold of him with one hand while I held onto a bar with the other. I was standing up to the armpits in the muck. By the time I got hold of him, his arms were all wet and greasy with the filth. But pool as I liked, I could make nothing of it, and the stuff got deeper and deeper until it was almost over his face. Try and clear it away from my mouth and give me breath, he said, and I swept his face with my arm half a dozen times, but it beat me. He said, goodbye, Jack, and I said, goodbye, Geordie, and the stuff then flowed over his face. More than a century on, the Donny Bristle disaster remains an intrinsic part of the area's history and is unlikely to ever be forgotten. In total, eight men lost their lives and today are commemorated on a cairn which lies at the side of the road as you enter Cowdenbeath from the south. What follows are some notes found with the Lost Rescue Party.